go back to Right, the... we're now going on with the agenda. The Whips have agreed that the motion on housing will be taken next, followed by the motion on EU residents in Wandsworth. Can I ask Councillor Ellis to move and Councillor Govindia to second the motion in their names? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to uh, move the motion uh, and there are speakers. Mr Mayor, in seconding the motion, um, I will be brief in view of the hour and the need to have a debate on the second uh, motion on, on, uh, on EU membership. Uh, I just wanted to draw members' attention to a visit that Councillor Ellis, myself, a number of councillors on the opposite side and officers made to uh, three London boroughs to look at the way in which they are delivering uh, a state regeneration. What was interesting in those visits was that these three Labour authorities were embracing uh, uh, regeneration with, with great gusto. They were doing it in, in a kind of non doctrinaire way. They were providing new homes at all in of all tenures and in, in, actively engaged in, in, in placemaking and I think we could learn a lot from them and of course one of the things that uh, I was told certainly by the leader of Southwark was that you had to have resolve and you needed to be open-minded about the kind of regeneration you, you put forward what is interesting about the, uh, the, the, the amendment the opposition has moved is uh, that they seem to be much more interested in the years of yesteryears when uh, there was mono tenure on our states and there was not much hope available to those who lived there. And now let's hope that this is just pure politics rather than their long-term ambition or interest. Mr. Mayor, the motion lists a number of ways in which uh, this council has used imagination and ingenuity in making every opportunity work to provide housing for all people who live in the borough. I think, um, what would be interesting is, is uh, how the opposition react to some of the finer grain con co uh, deliveries, the A67 units are, that we will be delivering on Queenstown, uh, in Queenstown Ward for local residents, for social housing, for part ownership uh, at, at, at affordable prices, and whether that is something that they think is a good thing or not. Evidently, sites are small. Evidently, we are filling it uh, to, to its maximum capacity. The point I made and the motion makes is that you need to be clever about, about grabbing the opportunities that come. Which also turns to, to the debate or question and answer that we had about the, the homes for Londoners uh, that um, uh, Councillor Ellis mentioned earlier. Tomorrow is the first meeting of these homes for Londoners. Um, the previous, home, previous board was called Homes for London Board. Um, so there's ERs added to, to the new one. Uh, it sounds a bit like uh, the other guy had a gang, I want my gang, and I want to give it a name. So that's what's probably happening. Reading through the papers, what is evident is that we will be debating much, but we will not have m a vote on any of the things. And hopefully, the, uh, the Mayor Khan who chairs it, or will chair the meeting, will in fact use the same sort of imagination and ingenuity that we have used in spending his 3.15 billion to the best advantage. And hopefully, some of that will come our way and, and, and uh, address the housing needs in the bar. So now I could go on, but I do believe that uh, members would want to debate this as fully, but also debate the subsequent motion on, on EU membership. Now I end here, but commend the motion. Thank you. Uh, there is an amendment to this motion that has been circulated. Can I ask Councillor MacDonald to move and Councillor White to second the amendment? Yeah, move the amendment. And move to second. Thank you. Yes. Councillor White. Um, okay, it must be Christmas because this motion praises our London Mayor, so it's, uh, it's a good time of year for that. It also states this government has earmarked 3.15 billion for 90,000 affordable homes, and words like pump prime have entered the uh, majority group's lexicon. Uh, I wonder if they've all been down the library, reduced opening time, so you have to check the opening hours, so uh, you can get your hands on uh, John Maynard Keynes' text. Yeah. I have a few, if, you, uh, if your colleagues... Mr Mayor, point, point of factual Councilor intervention, Cook. if I may. 
Uh, the opening hours have gone. Are you up, happy for him to interject? And none of our, none of our uh, in contrast to uh, certain Labour-run borough <laughs> next door, no, which has got chaotic closures on its hands, all of ours are open and very popular. Will you accept this interruption? No, no, no. Uh, um, the, the, we've got reduced hours. Uh, Will you accept this interruption? Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, that's not correct. That's not correct. Mm. It is. Okay. Of course, the fact uh, that we've been on the road, wrong road nationally for six years leaves us with a, a lot of catching up to do and a lack of soci social home building in Wandsworth during that time. Just 44 last year cannot make up for the shortfall of almost 10,000 council houses over the last 25 years. We obviously need more than one for one scheme for, of replacement for every uh, council house sold. We really need to focus housing policy in Wandsworth now that the temporary housing bill that has cost this council £11 million over the last six years, £3 million this last year, a 600% increase since 2010. By getting the, most, getting the almost 1,500 people now homeless in Wandsworth out of B&Bs, out of overcrowded bedrooms and other temporary accommodation and into good standard long-term homes. Lewisham Council are building modular homes and Croydon offering shared schemes that improve temporary housing provision and are cheaper and I would urge this council to look at these. I was lucky to uh, move from a drafty limited facility home when I was seven to a new council house because the council where I lived and the national government believed in an aggressive council house building policy. I remain proud of my background, a pride I continue to have in social housing estates and I cannot understand a council that for almost 40 years has continually chipped away at the gift it received from that era and has failed to replenish. We have opportunity, but sadly we squander it. High land values are blamed for the council being unable to meet its, even own, its own affordability targets. With the Nine Elms development, for instance, yet surely the gold mine that the developers have been gifted at Nine Elms allows us to negotiate a better return than the 25% of affordable homes, and that must be the priority in that development. It is extremely disappointing. If we could reach the Mayor's target of 35% affordability, we could see a lot more social homes. Of course, the right to uh, part by will allow some people to purchase a sli slice of their homes. But thousands? Are we realistically saying that thousands of ones with council tenants have a real opportunity to buy their homes in the same high land value areas mentioned earlier? It is essential that lower earners can buy homes in Wandsworth, but it is difficult to lavish praise on a situation where over 9,000 of the social houses sold by Wandsworth Council are now in the private rented centre and attracting rents of over a third higher than their socially renting next door neighbour. Many of those who own and rent out are by people who are extremely well off sometimes rented to people who are receiving state housing benefit, the state paying for the pleasure of renting out homes that the state originally paid for. The greatest cost, of course, is to the homeless, families with children living in overcrowded, substandard temporary accommodation and B&Bs in one of the most prosperous boroughs in London. With the attendant problems with physical and mental health at this time of year, it is particularly distressing and poignant. The private rented sector is a particular worry and I commend my colleague Councillor Jones for her work in this area, exposing the very real issues for people living in rogue landlords' property in Wandsworth. A landlord registration scheme would really help and some Labour ca uh, council controlled boroughs have introduced, giving councils extra powers to vet and intervene when minimum standards are not met. There is a lot of hubris about this motion. It fails to grasp that the housing provision in Wandsworth isn't good enough. From rogue landlords, a failure to learn from good example from other boroughs, and not enough zeal in replacing sold off social homes. Let's hope that we continue this foring of relations with our London Mayor and John Maynard Keynes so we can build the homes our people desperately need. Be as, aggress uh, as aggressive as those councils were in my youth to build the quality home so we can transfer people from the demoralising and wasteful sectors into the dignified and efficient sector that I 
myself benefited from. Councillor Crivelli. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'm sure it will come as no surprise to members in this chamber that London's population is now growing at twice the rate of the UK as a whole. Over the past four years alone, nearly another 500,000 people are living in the capital. It goes without saying that Wandsworth cannot expect to be immune to this sort of population growth. Quite to the contrary, Wandsworth now has a population growth above the London average, and in the last 10 years, nearly an additional 50,000 people have chosen to make Wandsworth their home. This presents Wandsworth Council with the tremendous challenge of not only increasing the supply of housing, but providing homes for the increasingly diverse range of families and age groups that now live in this borough. No one living in London could be under any illusions about the problems Londoners face with housing in the capital. Exorbitant house prices and rents, overcrowding and lack of choice means London has always had an extraordinary housing situation in relation to the rest of the UK. As Simon Jenkins writing the Evening Standard said, London doesn't have a housing crisis, it has housing madness. As demand has soared, this has exacerbated every problematic feature of London's housing market, creating incredible challenges for London boroughs. Wandsworth has risen to this challenge, as over the next decade, more homes will be built in our borough than any other in London. Wandsworth has continued to produce innovative projects to tackle the borough's increased housing demands. Pioneering ideas, such as the Hidden Homes Programme, the House Purchase Grant Scheme, the Affordable Housing Programme and the new Right to Park Buy initiative are delivering a diverse range of housing tenure for our borough's residents. Nationally since 2010, nearly 280,000 affordable homes have been built, with 67,000 of them being built in London. Last year was a record for the capital, with the most number of affordable homes completed since records began in 1991. This does contrast sharply with the period 1997 to 2010, when house building in the UK fell to levels not seen since the 1920s. Not surprising that over the same period, the number of social homes available for rent fell by over 420,000. Tom Copley, Labour's housing spokesman on the GLA, has publicly suggested that Labour should apologise for its poor track record on social house building. Moreover, Liam Byrne, the former Chief Secretary of Treasury, has also acknowledged his previous government's failure in relation to the capital. He stated, look at the levels of rent here in London. They are going up and up and up. We should have been building more homes. Therefore, I'm sure all members of this council would have been pleased to see the autumn statement allocate over three billion for affordable housing in London. This is the biggest ever affordable housing building settlement that the capital has seen and gives London a genuine opportunity to build more affordable homes for the capital's ever expanding population. Wandsworth already has one of the largest affordable housing programmes in the country. With the exception of only two other London boroughs in South West London, no other council has managed to develop as much affordable housing as Wandsworth. Last year, completed affordable housing dwellings exceeded expectations, reaching 501 completions, well above the London average, and the council will provide over 1,600 new affordable homes over the next three years. As a council, ensuring a range of affordable homes is vital for families and working households, but it's also essential for local economic development. Of the affordable properties last year which were available for shared ownership, 96% were sold to people live or, living or working in the borough. This does give real hope to local people and their families that they will have the opportunity to share in the prosperity of our borough by having their own home in Wandsworth. It is fair to say that a number of members of this chamber will acknowledge that imposing affordable housing quotas has the potential to impede local development plans. As Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, recently told London Assembly members, I cannot set a target for affordable housing. Well, rather than imposing quotas, Wandsworth approach is to enable housing development to flourish by working in partnership with developers and our excellent housing associations. The only real way to inject affordability into the London housing market is to maximise supply across all tenure in an effort to close the gap between supply and demand. It is interesting to note, as has been mentioned, that the development in the Nine Elms Vauxhall Opportunity Area, the Council has been able to negotiate ever-increasing percentages of affordable housing on these schemes. The well, the percentage of affordable housing has risen in excess of 20%, with the latest permissions reach, uh, securing a minimum of 25%. The demographics of London impose a near intolerable task on London authorities when it comes to providing housing. 
Wandsworth is not idly standing by in the housing crisis, it's challenging it head on. Across our borough we're seeing real investment in quality homes being constructed as we continue to meet the ever-growing demands for housing in our borough. I would ask you to support the motion. Councillor Dunn. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I share much of Councillor Crivelli's vision um, on housing in Wandsworth and, um, and thank you very much for those um, facts and figures because I think they really put into perspective um, the, the picture that we, that we have here. I mean, London is an extraordinary city. It's a huge capital city. I moved back in 1996. The population has increased 2 million in those 20 years. Um, when I moved here with my husband, we bought our first house in Earlsfield. It cost just over £100,000. That same house in Earlsfield changed hands recently for over £900,000. Um, I know that my husband and I could not afford to buy that house now if we were starting out in the way that we did then. And this is one of the huge challenges, not just for our residents, but, but for, for, for this council. Because high house prices, high land prices, high rents, these are something that affect all of us. Um, I just want to speak briefly about generation rent because, um, first of all, one of the interesting thing that, things that happened in the autumn statement was that um, the lobbying by um, a certain group of students actually worked and they managed to secure a really quite significant victory which is that tenant fees will in future be abolished so that landlords and agencies will no longer be able to charge those fees to renters. Now that may not seem like a big thing, but if you take a typical um, rental scenario in Wandsworth, um, two professional sharers taking on a flat at typically about £400 a week. Now at the moment, at today's prices, what that will mean is that they will have to pay a month's rent up front six weeks damage deposit, eight weeks if they have a pet, and then on top of that, they'll have to pay around £300 worth in fees. That means in order to move in, they'll have to get together around £4,500 just to move in to a two-bedroom flat in Wandsworth. That is a large amount of money in anyone's, um, in anyone's book. And I think this change in legislation, which will come through at some point next year, is significant because what I've noticed is that our renters, those typically in their 20s and 30s, they move often. They move often every year or at least every two years. That means that every time they move house, they are faced with these fees over and over again. And... Um, I think we should, we should definitely all welcome that. Coming back to the theme um, of this evening, I think we should acknowledge that Wandsworth has been a really significant enabler of house building. And I think that, um, Councillor White, you live in a different universe to mine. Because although I acknowledge that there are problems, house prices are high, rents are high, there is also a massive amount of house building going on in this borough. And house building... Can you allow her to speak, please? Thank you. But house building with, with some very innovative ideas, because we're looking at across the board, and I don't know if Councillor White's seen this or not. If not, I will email it to you this evening. Affordable housing update October 19th this year, October 16th. Have you received this report written by our, our housing officers? which gives you a rundown of all the units that are being built, that are being planned in the pipeline, and it covers everything from affordable social rent, things like pocket homes, shared ownership schemes, the whole works. And just for 2015-16, overall, 2,766 units. That's an astonishing success, and I'm really amazed that actually my colleagues opposite don't seem to acknowledge what is going on in the borough. Now, I know that we face major challenges because of house prices being so high in London, but what I think we need to, to do is to work out what it is we individually can each do. Now, it's a very large borough geographically, and I think that every single ward member should be looking at the streets and properties Five buildings, bits of land that could be developed. Why don't you pop those on? And send them up to Council Rent? Because I think it's a 
We work together <laughs> constructively. I'm so, sorry to the, uh, the next speaker. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. sorry. Could I ask for a point of clarification on the issue of um, declarations of interest? I mean, um, uh, Councillor Dunn has just mentioned pocket living, um, and uh, Councillor Cuff and I are very well aware that uh, he has a, an association with uh, pocket living because he just came before uh, the Housing Committee at the London Assembly on behalf of pocket living. Uh, so I think he may have a pecuniary interest in that company, which should perhaps be declared. I'm not quite sure uh, whether Councillor Hanson was in the uh, chamber for the discussion that included Storm um, and she certainly used to have a very close association with Storm um, which I believe may be ongoing. I, I would just like you to give a ruling on whether or not if we do have a pecuniary interest in organisations that crop up in debate whether we do still need to mention them and whilst I'm on my feet can I just mention that I have a close association with the uh, London Assembly uh, as the Assembly Member for Merton and Wandsworth uh, because uh, I, I was... Uh, I, I wouldn't wish you not to know that, and it, it may have, you may have not realised that from some of the earlier discussions. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. It's, uh, it's up to members. Them. Okay. We, c we can provide uh, assistance outside the meeting, but it's up to councillors themselves to provide that information. Okay. Now, the next speaker is uh, a maiden speech, um, and it's being delivered by Councillor, I've got the pronunciation right, Dekadem, is that better? Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor, for allowing me to make my maiden speech during this debate around housing. And I must say, um, it's a speech that is somewhat fitting, it's a somewhat fitting debate uh, for someone who was recently elected in Queenstown. Um, nowhere represents the tensions and inequalities of modern London more than Queenstown does. The world is witnessing the struggle over what regeneration and development mean for everyday Londoners. Those who can't afford to live in the luxury flats rising around them, but who are rooted in an area they've grown up in and love. If there was one issue on the doorstep that came up time and time again, it was housing. Be it the lack of low-cost homes, soaring rents, huge housing waiting lists, or problems of damp and overcrowding. Having decent home, what was previously a social democrat had given, is now a source of anxiety and uncertainty for many people. Of course the council will say it's building more homes than any other. Just look to Nine Elms. But let's say it how it is. No matter how many Riverside penthouses go up, the fundamental problem is not being addressed. As every major housing study of the last few years show, it's not that we're building too little, but it's we're not building the kind of housing stock that is needed to address the problem. We need more social housing units and genuinely affordable homes. Councillors, residents roll their eyes when they hear the term affordable housing because they know it's not affordable for them, their kids, or anyone they know. When an affordable studio flat is costing upwards of £400,000, it's understandable why so many residents feel the development is not for them. As someone born and raised in Battersea, it certainly makes me question whether I'll ever be able to raise a family where I grew up. This motion celebrates the 20,000 homes sold off under right to buy. Yet how many of these homes have been replaced? The answer is less than a third. No wonder people are feeling the squeeze when social housing stock continues to deplete while demand increases. It is appalling that of the 9,000 or so homes being built as part of the Nine Elms development, less than 10% are social. An opportunity that could have benefited a generation of residents in Battersea is instead creating a symbol of all that is wrong with the London housing market. Let us be clear, when it comes to housing, we must be getting the best deal possible from the developers. Regeneration should address the loss of social housing, not facilitate in pricing people out of the borough and the breakdown of communities. Why is it that Queenstown housing stock like the Doddington, Savona and Patmore are left in such a state? These are public assets and yet they've been in desperate need for renovation for years. When gleaming new developments are rising up all around, it's hard not to see the inequality. We also have to make sure that community assets are not sacrificed as part of the regeneration. And a prime example from my neck of the woods is in Queenstown is Flanagan's, Flanagan's Pub. And earlier I gave you a petition there um, on this specific issue. Flanagan's is the last traditional pub in the area with a large and loyal base. There are three dance teams, an OAP Christmas dinner service, live music every week, and so many more other community activities. Even the Chelsea pensioners travel down from Fulham all the way to Battersea for their local pint. If this council is serious about making sure regeneration in Queenstown benefits everyone, it's in protecting places like Flanagan's that prove that the local authority is looking out for the community and not just for developers. I would hope this council upholds its flagship pub protection record given Flanagan's Article 4 protection. 
And on this issue, we all know how important consultation is when it comes to affecting change in our areas. And while not a housing issue specifically, it's clear that many in Queenstown residents, many of the Queenstown residents felt they were being swept aside and, and ignored when it came to Formula E. I think we need to make sure that residents feel empowered in decisions that are empowered and that the decisions that are being made around regeneration, um, it's crucial to making sure we have proper community engagement. The mandate I got from the people of Queenstown is a testament to the issues I'm raising here tonight. I'm honoured to now be representing what, and I say this without any bias at all, is undoubtedly the best ward in Battersea. <laughs> <laughs> With the beauty of Battersea Park, the famous dogs and cats home, and of course the iconic power station. I promise to be a councillor for all residents. Whether you've just moved to the area, we've been living there for three generations. The changes taking place need to work for everyone. I think that's something we can all agree on. I hope kids growing up on the Doddington, Patmore and Savona will see a Battersea that includes them in its future. Thank you very much. Can we switch your mic off? Thank you. Councillor Salia. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, and thank you to my colleagues who have already spoken and covered off nicely what we're doing in terms of affordable housing. In light of the hour, I'm going to be as brief as I can. I want to focus on our offer to our council tenants in the borough. And I've sort of broken this out into three distinct portions. Essentially, maintaining our stock, developing our stock, and helping our tenants onto home ownership. So firstly, I want to make it clear that we're absolutely committed to the continuous improvement of housing stock in the borough. Uh, the Council agreed in January of last year to provide £77 million over the next three years on the Decent Homes Plus project. This is going to keep our estates at standards above the national average and includes really proactive program like, programmes like the Environmental Estates Initiative, which targets areas in need of investment and actively works with residents to identify things that can be done. We're also taking forward our large-scale regeneration projects in the, on the Winstanley and the Alton Estates. These are going to be a huge benefit to residents and provide really varied mixed communities that are designed to be fit for 21st century living. The projects have addressed the renewing the housing provision, but what they've also done is provide employment, skills, education training for residents. They're really focused on building cohesive communities that are going to benefit generations to come. As well as renovating, maintaining and transforming our existing stock, Wandsworth's also building homes for the future. The second prong of our council home strategy is to build an additional 300 houses to join, to add, sorry, to the 250 council homes which we've already delivered. In a central London borough, it's a little bit cynical of the opposition, I think, to, to suggest that because proportionally that's a small number, it's not good enough. We, we're building and making commitments to renew and build additional stock where we can and to provide high quality social rented accommodation. Finally, Wandsworth Council recognises and supports the fact that a lot of our social renting tenants at the moment want to, want to one day be homeowners of their own. And that's why we've pioneered the Right to Park Buy scheme, which is really innovative, allowing people that can't afford to buy out the entire home to start to get their foot onto the ladder and to own their own homes and save for their future. Wandsworth is ambitious and innovative with its housing offer. We're committed to helping every resident in our borough. Our work in the social rented sector is going to see our tenants enjoy good, high quality rented accommodation for generations. Our aspirations for our tenants have allowed us our regeneration schemes to provide health, employment and training opportunities. They've also allowed us to provide the impetus and the motivation to get people onto the housing ladder. I urge you to support the motion and to show our officers how very proud we are of the work that they've done and to show that they have our full support to continue to innovate and deliver great housing for Wandsworth. Thank you. Councillor Cuff. Thank you. Um, firstly, um, I'd like to welcome the councillor, the new councillor, Councillor Dickenham. It was a very good speech and I look forward to working with you. Uh, going forward. I've been told that I should have a very quick speech because um, we have the Brexit debate. I'm of course looking forward to finding out what Brexit means. I've absolutely no idea so if any of the councillors who are speaking can enlighten me. Um, <laughs> well, whatever Brexit means, fantastic. And, and, then, and then just just finally thank you to Councillor Cooper who I spent a couple of hours with yesterday morning for reminding me of course um, I hope she found that fascinating. And. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and of course, she is absolutely right. And unfortunately, it's one of the reasons I spend less and less time um, on the council because, like a number of 
councillors here, I have a, a frontline role um, trying to deliver some affordable housing in London in, its only, in a small, meaningful way, hopefully. Um, so I just want to make two very brief points. Um, well, firstly, the bigger point um, about the £3.1 billion. Pounds, um, it's great to see it. Um, I hope it will be impactful. I think one of the mistakes of the last government was to focus far too much on and one single tenure really, which was the starter homes idea, which I think now is still born as an idea and we'll probably see that being very much put to the side to a more multi-tenured approach, which is what, we, what London needs, what, what the UK certainly needs in terms of a housing solution. I think the Labour amendments to the motion, one of the things I, I would say is that we should, be very, um, we should value very highly the fact that the council has capacity to build its own homes in a small way. Um, many local authorities that I see around London don't have any capacity to build their own homes um, anymore and the fact that the local authority can build homes shouldn't be just regarded as a dismal output. It's actually something that can be built upon. I think it's a very positive thing um, for us as a council to have that. Um, I think the, the, final, the final thing I'll say is that you know, the, the biggest challenge is, is finding opportunities to build. And, it's such a shame when you have a, a capital of 600 square miles or so that at least half of it is either green belt or backland garden and therefore is undevelopable and it feels to me as if we are going to, to meet the, the challenge of 50,000 homes or whatever the target is, we need to find a way of unlocking some of those, those land opportunities as a, as a capital on crossrail or whatever to try and get the housing supply because I, I agree with Councillor White we need to build aggressively and um, we need to build all kinds of different tenures and the only way we're going to do that is to, to open up these parts of London which are, are not being opened up at the moment. So I'll keep my words to that and I look forward to the, the Brexit debate. Thank you. Thanks so much, Councillor MacDonald. Thank you. Um, so I, I'll keep my remarks as short as I can but I want to concentrate not actually what's in the motion but what for me is very much missing. Um, and there are some obvious and glaring omissions from this. There is no mention um, in this motion, and I'm pretty shocked by this actually, of the 1,485 homeless people living in Wandsworth. And I don't see how we can have a debate about the homeless situation in Wandsworth if we're not actually going to mention the fact that you've got nearly 1,500 people homeless in the borough. There's no mention either, as it currently stands until we put our amendment forward, of the families that are living in B&B &B accommodation, 15 of them this last quarter for over six weeks. And that's why we tabled the amendment, to get a bit of reality back into uh, this debate. And to remind you of those 1,485 people that you want to airbrush out of the picture. Um, and I think as well we've got to try and forget, to, that we don't forget, sorry, that according to your own strategic needs, there are 15,000 non-decent homes in the private rented sector as well, and there's no mention of that either here in this motion. And I know councillors um, will object to the figure, but the reality is that he can't tell us what the figure is, that we don't know how many thousands of homes there are in Wandsworth in the private rented sector that are not decent. Um, and if you read Wandsworth's latest housing progress report, the target for making homes decent in the private rented sector, and let's not forget there are 43,000 homes in the private rented sector in Wandsworth. The target for making private, the private rented sector homes decent is 230. And I, I, don't, I fail to see how in any situation, and, and Councillor Dunn earlier asked if we're living in a parallel universe, I suggest that if people really think that there's only 230 homes in this borough in the private rented sector that need to be made decent, it's not us that's living in the private rented sector parallel universe, sorry. So our amendment sets out to remind you about the people who are homeless in this borough and the people who are in the lower end of the private rented sector and for the people who are also relying on social housing and the hundreds of families in the queues waiting for council homes. I have uh, one resident who's been in touch with me who is in a two bedroom house. She has three teenage children. One of them is a 17 year old boy with mental health um, issues and she's been told that there are 300 families ahead of her in the queue. So what I would say is that there is little ambition for those people in this um, motion and we want to put some ambition back in for those people and instead of giving serious consideration to some of the quite ambitious suggestions that we've been um, asking you to consider, for example piloting a license scheme for the private rented sector, we're constantly being shouted down when we bring this up. 
we're being told that there's no problem here, nothing to see, and then you know we have Councillor Govindi tonight saying uh, it's not that bad here because it's actually worse in Croydon. And I would always advocate that while you can learn best practice, you can learn best practice from other boroughs, but I take no comfort from you telling me that a situation that's bad in Wandsworth isn't that bad actually because it's worse, worse in Croydon. I'll tell you what, the 1,485 people, and I'll say it again, they don't care what the situation in Croydon is like. And we're here to talk about Wandsworth, and you're the leader of Wandsworth Council, not Croydon. So let's have a vision for Wandsworth and not bother us. Some point of personal explanation. Um, oh, sorry, I think Mr. Macdonald doesn't will wish you give to. Away? Sorry, can I, will you give away? Thank you. I think, Mr. Mayor, if I may say so, I am entitled to find a personal explanation. I do not need to be given way to. Okay. What I would say is that Councillor Macdonald needs to learn what others are doing because that is exactly how a local authority improves itself. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, I would also like to put that back to the opposite, um, to the council's opposite. Let's learn for, from Croydon exactly. Let's look at the private rented, the licensing scheme that they've got for the private rented sector and look at what that is doing for those people living in the private rented sector in Croydon. I'm all for learning from other boroughs, but I don't want to limit our ambition because it's worse in Croydon. So I'll finish up now. Um, what I would say is the other, my final point. Okay. Will you give way so that she can speak? Yeah, sorry, I think I'll just finish up now because we're, we're sorry, getting can on. Can you just hold on? Can we all talk at once? I, I, I think, um, I think it's, we should actually just get a move on. And Mr. Mayor, speaking. on the point of okay. order, Thank a you. point of personal explanation does not need the permission of the speaker. A point of personal explanation is a right of any member who has genuinely been misquoted in this chamber. Read out, read out what, it, what the words say. What the standing order, this is what the standing order says. Can I just read out the standing order, please? A personal explanation shall be confined to some material part of the former statement by the member, which may appear to have been misunderstood in the present debate. Now, Councillor Dunn, do you wish to make a personal Counsel explanation? Councillor Dunn, do you wish I, to I will make be brief, but my name was mentioned. And if I could just say that I do work in the private rented sector, so I do know quite a lot about it. Thank you. Councillor Macdonald. I, I, I don't think I said anything other than that, but anyway, let's keep going. So finally, I'd just like to make the point that the situation, the homeless situation, the number of families living in temporary accommodation, that is actually costing us a lot of money. And actually, the only real winners in all of this is the landlords, because as Wandsworth has a duty to house these homeless families, the landlords are um, racking up their profits. In some cases, I think charging up to £100 a night for temporary accommodation. So let's have a real vision for the housing of this borough and let's not forget our homeless people or for those waiting for homes, council homes or for those living in the sub-sector private rented accommodation. Support our amendment. Councillor Ellis. Um, thank you Mr Mayor. Could I first start by congratulating Councillor Dicker then uh, on his maiden speech. He spoke with uh, eloquence and passion uh, and uh, uh, we commend him for that. Uh, one thing he did do wrong, actually, and this is a lesson, uh, he described Queenstown as the best ward in Battersea. Uh, had my councillor, he's very lucky that my ward, fellow ward councillor, Councillor Usher, is not here because he would have been put very, very firmly in his place there, uh, but he'll have to accept the wrath of uh, Councillor Sailor and, and, and myself on, on that particular subject. Um, uh, just turning briefly to the Labour uh, amendment, um, it's obviously this is the danger of doing amendments by committee because it reads a bit like two grumpy old men sitting in a pub putting the world to rights and saying and another thing uh, so I really I don't think many of the things are actually worth uh, even discussing any further uh, the leader in uh, his uh, initial opening remarks referred to the visits that uh, members on our side and, and indeed on the other side uh, made to uh, new developments in Southwark, Newham and Hackney um, they're all very interesting, all very different, uh, and gave us, I think, some very good insight into the new schemes that we can look forward to in York Road, and Stanley, and uh, the Alton. Uh, one very interesting thing, particularly in the, the Southwark development, uh, which was uh, not dissimilar to our own in that it was an estate demolished and rebuilt, uh, is that the levels of affordable housing uh, that they are uh, producing are significantly lower uh, than those that uh, we will be doing, and indeed the number of social units that will be there uh, are lower than the existing or the existing social units that were there before the estate was demolished. So, uh, but clearly uh, finan finance came to play there uh, uh, and they made it uh, stack up as financially as well as they were able to. 
uh, Councillor Crivelli uh, and Councillor Dunn uh, referred to the dramatic increase in the population of London. Um, we are now the third largest city uh, in Europe uh, after Istanbul, and it's arguable whether Istanbul is a European or an Asian city, uh, and Moscow. Uh, over the next couple of years, uh, another million people are expected to come to London. That is the equivalent of the population of Birmingham which is the second largest city uh, in our country. What we're not getting with it is the land mass of Birmingham. So it does present huge problems because where there is a shortage of land uh, and more people wanting to buy or rent, inevitably it will uh, drive up prices. Um, the opposition are, are opposed to uh, high rise. It was mentioned in one of the questions. But if you don't have the land, how are you going to provide the homes? Councillor uh, Cuff has suggested uh, uh, backland development and, and green belt. Well, that's not a luxury we have here. We don't have any of those things, but it could well work in the outer London boroughs, uh, but certainly not in an inner London, which is where an awful lot of people uh, want to live. Um, Councillor White uh, correctly referred to the massive house building program in the 1950s when uh, Winston Churchill was Prime Minister and Harold Macmillan was the Housing Minister. Uh, one of the reasons, of course, for the massive house building that was required uh, was because an awful lot of it had been destroyed during the war. Uh, and, of course, there was also a lot of land available and much of the uh, building was done either later on uh, and during that period and later on in the form of new towns. Uh, uh, Milton Keynes obviously came very much later on, but places like Harlow and so on uh, were built on, on what was greenfield sites. Um, and uh, a lot of land London was, uh, in my view, wrongly cleared in the 60s uh, with some of the blocks that we're now having to demolish. Um, Councillor Dunn referred to the difficulties that uh, private renters face and uh, we are looking at, uh, and indeed we will be shortly uh, uh, having uh, institutional private rent uh, accommodation which will get rid of some of the difficulties that some uh, renters found with their landlords and I think will be a very very popular product uh, indeed uh, and uh, it's working very well in other areas and we very much hope uh, that it will work here too. Uh, uh, pocket homes which was also mentioned and Councillor Cuff knows a lot more about that than me. I'm uh, rather you know, very pleased to say that they uh, will be uh, I think starting on site if they haven't already started uh, on, uh, on their new development uh, just near the, uh, the uh, Southside Shopping Centre uh, and that will be their largest scheme in Europe and it will provide homes for people to buy uh, at 20% discounts so that is uh, I think a very commendable thing indeed. Councillor Salia uh, talked uh, about what we're actually doing on our estates and the investment that we're putting in. Um, we have one of the largest investment programs uh, in our estates in the country. Uh, all our homes are decent home standard uh, and have been for a number of of years and uh, as Councillor Salia said uh, we will be uh, investing further to achieve a, a Wandsworth plus uh, for a, a, a decent home standard. And finally turning to, to Councillor McDonald, well it's very difficult to know where to begin um, on this one. It seems to be a sort of tale of gloom and doom really isn't it? The grass isn't even half full. Um, we were told that uh, we could learn from Croydon's successes in the uh, licensing scheme. We haven't actually been told what the successes are. Uh, certainly in Newham where they introduced it and they had some appallingly bad private landlords there. Uh, I don't think there's any particular uh, improvement in the uh, housing stock there. All that's happened is a lot of the very bad landlords have just gone and moved somewhere else. So I, she does have a fascination with uh, licensing schemes. I don't really uh, know why. It's possibly this desire to regulate everything. But um, a lot of the figures, of course, she quoted uh, were incorrect, as was stated in question. I know it would have meant rewriting the speech, but there we go. That's one of those things. Um, so on the whole, Mr. Mayor, I think the motion as it stands is very commendable, and I urge the Council to support it. Thank you. The matter now before the Council is the amendment moved by Councillor MacDonald and seconded by Councillor White on housing. Agenda item 21. Please indicate by a show of hands for. Against. Thank you. 
Abstaining? So the One. amendment is lost, 1634. The right. amendment is lost, 1634, with one abstention. We have it on to the substantive motion. We now go, we move on to the matter now before the Council is the motion moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Govindia, agenda item 21. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. Against? It's most likely 16. I'm going to say that's 16. Any abstentions? One. One. So two. That, that, that motion one. is carried 34 16. That sorry. motion is carried 34 uh, for 16 against. With the one abstention. With the one abstention. <laughs>